Hello people of YouTube, here we are again with another video, and this one is about aperture, focal length, and most of all, depth of field. So, what is the aperture? Well, it's a circle inside the lens that allows light through it. And as you can see in this one, most of them are adjustable, getting larger or smaller depending on what you want to do. Like you can have a small one if you want darker pictures, and a bright one if you want brighter pictures. Here's another view of the aperture, this time from the front. And if you look closely, if I turn down the brightness a little bit on my camera, you can see that it is actually made up of multiple blades all working together to form a circle, which is adjustable. So you can have a large aperture or a small aperture. Here's an example of what adjusting your aperture can do to the brightness of your pictures. Here, projecting onto this piece of paper, is an image from this lens. And if you look very closely, you can see there's the sun, sky, and the outline of a few trees. Now, that's being projected onto the paper. And if you look, if I adjust the brightness up, there you go, you can see that a lot better now. If you look, whenever I adjust the aperture to be smaller, you can see that the image darkens so much that the only visible thing that you can see projecting onto the paper is a very small dot, and that's the sun. The rest of the image is too dark to even be visible. Remember how I told you the aperture had blades? Well, here's an example of what those blades can do to the out-of-focus regions of your image. Now here, that's the sun, and if you look, it has eight sides. Now, that's not in focus on the paper. It's out-of-focus, representing the out-of-focus regions of the picture and you can see there it's in focus you can see it well and it looks pretty good but if there were an out of focus part of it the bokeh or out of focus regions would have that shape now if you see wide open it's pretty circular but notched down it's not now here this is the SX40 in action and if we look if I zoom in and go out of focus you can see that the out of focus part or basically the whole thing. The pieces of light inside the picture are pretty circular, although you can see that they do appear to have what appears to be about six sides, but they're rounded, which is really good for the out focus regions. Now here, we have a demonstration of what aperture can do. So here we have a picture at 150 millimeters at f5.6. Now that's the widest and most telephoto the Canon PowerShot SX40 can go. Now, if you look, you can see that the Pentax K1000, nice film camera by the way, is very focused, but the background is very blurry. That's bokeh. Now here we have the same picture taken at the same focal length, but this time with f8, which is the most that it can normally go. And you can see it's a little bit more in focus. But here you see the with the CHDK hack, I went all the way to f16, and you can see that the background is very much more in focus than it was before another advantage of having that hack. Now here I'll talk about the focal length and here we have the Pentax A1000 with the lens I was using earlier and if you look on the front it is a Vanity zoom f3.5 to 4.5 and it's 28 to 80 millimeters and so it has the zoomed inness because it's a full frame camera obviously it uses film that means whenever it zooms in to 85 or zooms out to 28 it is it has the depth of field of a well of the lens it has but it's also it's the same zoomed inness I guess you could say as the lens says yeah as you can see it's full frame pretty big mirror inside there so yeah now here I'm trying to use a mirror to look at the lens info of the Canon and actually doesn't look half bad, but if you look closely, you can see it is a 4.3 to 150.5 millimeter lens, f2.7 to 5.8 USM, and that seems really wide on the wide angle lens, but this sense, the sensor of the SX40 is incredibly small compared to that of a full frame camera or even an APS-C size sensor from a entry level DSLR. So whenever it's zoomed in, it's the equivalent of 840, but you get the depth of field of a 150. And that can sometimes be bad if you really want narrow depth of field. Now here, 
is the size of a sensor of a Canon PowerShot SX40, or really any point and shoot, digital camera for that matter. And there's an actual sensor I pulled out of a really old camera. And there's a AA battery there so you can see the size and it's really small. Now here we have the size of a typical APS-C sensor, the size found in the Canon T2i or T3i. And most Nikon models, slightly bigger but not much. And as you can, and you can see that it is very much larger. And so here, that's a full frame camera, the same as the Pentax K1000 or any 35 millimeter film camera. And as you can see, it is like, it is gigantic compared to the one of any point and shoot. So because the sensors are bigger. If you have a 50 millimeter lens, say on the SX40, it's gonna act say like it's gonna be cl it's gonna have the close upness of a 300 millimeter lens. If you put it on the APS-C, it's more like 75 closeness, but if you put it on the full frame, it'll be obviously 50. However, on all of them, you will get the same amount of depth of field. So, yeah. Here you can see how a changing focal length can have a really big impact on the amount of depth of field you have. So here you can see one taken at 150 millimeters f8 and it looks pretty out of focus in the background but in this picture I took it at 75 millimeters with two times digital zoom and that's basically making the detector area of the sensor two times smaller so it's two times more close up and I zoomed it out to 75 millimeters to get the same framing and it's still at f8 and as you can see it is much more in focus than it was before so that's one way you can use a zoom to really affect the bokeh the amount of bokeh in your pictures here is a good example of when you can use narrow depth of field to your advantage it really helps isolate the subjects and you see that out of focus part that's that bokeh that I was mentioning. You can call it bokeh, 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 what, however you want to pronounce it. So that's that. Here's another one where there's nice narrow depth of field. However, this one is another story. This is one that you would really want like nearly infinite depth of field so that you have like the dock in focus, the sky in focus, the background in focus. Now that one was shot at the widest angle so it has the Depth of field of a 4.3, which is nearly infinite already, and it was taken at f16, so nothing in that picture will be out of focus. So, yeah, that's it. Depth of field, aperture, focal length, and bokeh.